All our business people are, are stranded. Egypt cannot pay for our tea because they are looking for dollars. We cannot pay for their sugar because we are also looking for dollars. Not by IMF and World Bank. Because IMF and World Bank, you have the final say. We don't have no say. We want another organization of equals where you have as much say because you pay as much as we do because we also pay. That's the organization we are looking for. And that is why we are saying we need a new financial architecture. I love having uh, uh, bold people and uh, I mean, I take the point. No, but at least you take first also guarantee. But just to address your point as a final conclusion, I don't know the country which would accept to have business or people being taxed if it's not voted by your people. This is a sovereign competence. You know, we are talking the normal. If we continue talking the normal, Emmanuel, we will never solve this problem. Impressive comments coming in there from His Excellency William Ruto, the President of Kenya, that I believe every right-thinking African must be describing as the Pan-African President. Yes, indeed, he's a Pan-African President. Barely one year in power, his love and his impact on the continent is already being felt. My name is David Oriokot, and this is Africa Digital Library. Here, we strive to make the black man regain his freedom, but this time, not through force, but through. We are all about giving you information and tips of advice that can help you get free, get free, really, like really break free from all sorts of slavery. In this video, I'll be talking about the safety of His Excellency President William Ruto of Kenya now of Africa because he's actually advocating for sovereignty for the entire continent, not just for Kenya. If you remember very well, following the death of Colonel Muhammad Gaddafi, media reports were flooding everywhere that one of the reasons why Western powers had to take our very own Colonel Muhammad Gaddafi down was because he advocated for a single currency that would be backed by the African gold as a medium of trade and exchange between African countries. And this is not any different from what President William Ruto is pushing for. And the question we are asking today is, how safe is President William Ruto? Won't we have another loss the way we lost uh, Muhammad Gaddafi because of this very honorable move? And by the way, a very, very patriotic move that he has pulled up there. So without much ado, let's dive in and begin to discuss these matters. But before we get started, if you're new here, I would appreciate if you could subscribe so that every time you upload a video, you're amongst the first people to get to know. And also we ask you, please, if you can, give us a big thumbs up because this will help many other black people around the world discover this video and share and let's share let's share let's keep sharing this video let many people get this opinion and lastly don't forget to comment and tell us what you think in the comment section let's begin to share these things let's begin to be together because we are all africans and our supremacy is very important let no one lie you It is now common knowledge that since independence, the white man withdrew from Africa. And to many of us, it seems like that was independence. But then, from that time up to now, the white man has dedicated time and resources to keeping the African people in dire poverty. By doing that, they are able to maintain slavery of the African and orchestrate neocolonial practices throughout the continent. They have done this by offering Africa unfair terms of trade. For example, we are trading with the dollar and the euro, even for things that we need to buy locally here. I will be very honest with you. Some of our brothers from the Democratic Republic of Congo, from Somalia, Eritrea, Ethiopia, and South Sudan, even South Africa, incidentally, think that it is pride, it is some kind of superiority for you to walk with dollars in the pocket when we have our own currencies. These unfair terms of trade is what President William Ruto is standing up to and saying, no, look, we don't need this because every time you buy a dollar, you are actually losing. They have also 
orchestrated wars in Africa, funded wars, supplied arms for wars that never end in Africa. We have wars in Congo today, we have wars in the Republic of Sudan, we have wars in Mozambique, we have wars in Somalia, we have wars in the entire Sahel region, Guinea, Mali, Burkina Faso, and Central African Republic. Name many of them that you wish to name. But all this is being done because the white man needs to keep us where he wants us to be so he can control us. Let's listen to these few words from Professor uh, Nicholas Howard. Africa historically, Sub-Saharan Africa, has been fundamental to the global prosperity of the advanced countries. Okay? And Africa had a role to play. It has a role as a raw material producer. We will not allow Sub-Saharan Africa to escape that. Okay, we do everything to keep Sub-Saharan Africa where it is, also impoverished. It's absolutely vital for the prosperity of everyone else. Yes, indeed. The white man is willing to do anything to ensure that the African people continue to live in poverty. One aspect that we are discussing in this video is the element of targeting African leaders who try to come up to open up the eyes of their citizens, to swim their citizens out of poverty. And how are they doing this? We have our leaders constantly intimidated. Either they will be thrown out of power by a military coup or a civil uprising or stuff like that. Others are being blackmailed as dictators. I will give you a living example. When you move right across to the Republic of Rwanda, one of the youngest that no one even deserves to, to be criticizing openly in the public. I'm very sure when you reach Chigali, you'll be amazed at the level of development that our very visionary leader, His Excellency Paul Kagame, is doing in Chigali. From a genocide in 1994, Paul Kagame has been able to transform Rwanda to one of the quickest growing economies. When you turn on contemporary media, every media seems to say Rwanda is a dictatorship. President Paul Kagame is killing opponents. President Paul Kagame, and I want to call this Western orchestrated propaganda against President Paul Kagame. He's not the only one. There are many other leaders around Africa who are being blackmailed as dictators, who are being blackmailed and that their citizens should dispose them by a popular uprising because they don't stand for the values of human rights. But the question is, who determines these human rights? But that is not all. From colonial time, charismatic leaders like Kabaka Mwanga of Buganda, Kabalega of Bunyoro, Thomas Sankara of Burkina Faso, Patrice Lumumba of the DRC, Muhammad Gaddafi of Libya, and many others. Even I had <laughs> rumors on social media that uh, our very own Makufuli, who transformed Tanzania in a span of less than five years from a, a low class income to a middle class income. Rumors had it that maybe the West had a hand in all his sickness and stuff like that. Now, the question we are asking, at that rate of targeting and eliminating African leaders, it is now very clear to us that the white man does not want any African leader who seems to uplift the supremacy of the African continent, who seems to give Africa as a continent the strength at the negotiating table. And yet, this is exactly what our very own charismatic leader, President William Ruto of the Republic of Kenya, is trying to do. How shall we protect William Ruto? And how safe is William Ruto? Anyway, I'll be honest with you. The problem is not that the white man is able to target us, but the issue is that as Africans, we are not united. The strength of a continent as Africa begins with our unity. The question is, are we as Africans united enough to protect our leaders from being targeted by the West. Let's look at Patrice Lumumba of the Great Democratic Republic of Congo. Before being assassinated by the Belgians, 
the Belgians did not physically come and capture Patrice Lumumba. Instead, it was this greedy man, Mobutu Seseko, who stabbed Patrice Lumumba in the back, arrested him, and delivered him to the Belgians, where he finally got his humiliating death. Does that make sense? Let's again look at Thomas Sankara in Burkina Faso. The French did not assassinate Thomas Sankara directly. Rather, they used our very own greedy Blaise Compaire to be able to assassinate him. I would give you a very latest example. And that is recently, President Yoweri Museveni of Uganda assented to the anti-LGB IGT++++ law. Europe woke up and said, this is not right. But the question is, President Yoweri Museveni says, we are doing what is good for Africa, not what is good for Europe, because we have our ways as Africans. While other leaders were very busy applauding President Yoweri Museveni, like this leader here. Your Excellency, we asked yesterday whether we would have the honor to meet the father of Africa, the leader who has been able to stand in the gap for Africa against this attempt to have Africa enslaved again. And so, Your Excellency, we are very, very happy. We made a request that we want to come and see you. And we were requesting to see you largely for three things. Your Excellency, to see President Yoweri Kaguta Museveni. It was amazing. They were traitors. They were backstabbers. Like Juan Malema from South Africa, who was very busy feasting with the white people, holding demonstrations everywhere, shouting that President Yoweri Museveni should leave the LGBT alone. Speech. I'm here to say to the comrades and the people of Uganda, we are with them against the tyranny because we cannot allow any regime in the world to kill people on the basis of identity. And surprisingly, Malema seems to say that he's standing for the rights of Africans. He pretends that he's in South Africa fighting the white supremacy in favor of African supremacy. What kind of a shame is that? In fact, Malema, 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 I hope that wherever people like Bishop Desmond Tutu are, wherever people like Nelson Mandela are, they pray for you because they must be very ashamed of you to pretend to be fighting for African freedom when you're there holding a march in support of LGBT and rebuking an African leader who is standing for the values of Africans. Well, all that said, how safe then is President William Ruto from the white man's claws? And is there anything we can do to protect President William Ruto? The answer is absolutely yes. President William Ruto is not safe. President William Ruto, I repeat it again and again, is not safe. The white man does not want any African leader who tends to trample on his supremacy. The white man does not want any African leader who seems to open the eyes of Africans. And this is exactly what President William Ruto is doing. The question therefore is, how then do we protect President William Ruto? The answer is very simple. African leaders ought to speak the same language and carry the same message from Egypt down to Pretoria in South Africa. From Kenya across to Gabon and the DRC, the message should be one. And I expect that no African leader should be quiet. As William Ruto says in Kenya that this is what we need, as William Ruto goes to France and faces Emmanuel Macron and tells him, we need another financial body where we all have an equal say, where we all pay taxes, because we don't need to be helped. I expect the President of the Republic of Uganda, 
our grandfather Yuri Kaguta Museveni to be carrying the same message and saying yes we need a single currency to settle trade in Africa we need another monetary body that is not IMF where we have the unequal say we need President Kagame in Rwanda to say the same message we need the president of South Africa, Ramaphosa, instead of hawking bad news, going to try to mediate talks in Europe between Russia and Ukraine. You should be very vocal, going to Europe to tell them we need a single currency, we need a better financial body other than IMF. We need our Honorable Mama in Tanzania to carry the same message. We need Salva Kiir to say the same thing. We need General Burhan in Sudan to say the same thing. We need Ethiopia to say the same thing. Egypt should say the same thing. And let everybody else in Africa say the same thing. Otherwise, if we don't say the same thing, we are giving the Europeans, the Americans, and some ruthless Asians the chance to isolate President William Ruto, to say, oh, you're the one who is pushing for this agenda, which is going to deny us the chance to rob Africa of the raw materials, which are going to deny us a chance to dump all our dangerous goods in Africa. Is that what we are saying? So, the thing is, let's stand together as Africans. Whoever, whichever leader in Africa is keeping quiet at this time, I'm sorry, he's a backstabber. People like Malema, who are saying they are fighting for African supremacy, and when they are marching in support of the white ignorance, our traitors, our backstabbers, we don't need those people now. We need everybody, however small the country is. Madagascar, Somalia, Somaliland, Western Sahara, Cameroon, Gabon, Mali, Burkina Faso. Hey, by the way, Burkina Faso and the Sahel countries. I am really in love with the, with the Sahel countries. Burkina Faso, Mali, Gabon, those young leaders whom we are told took power by coup, we need to stand by them. I am so, so impressed with this very young captain leader of uh, Burkina Faso. After ascending to power by coup, he says, no, I think the French can now leave. I am so impressed with the leader in Mali that let the UN peacekeeping mission leave Mali with immediate effect because these are thieves pretending to be peacekeepers. They are thieves in Congo, stealing minerals from Congo and pretending to be peacekeepers. So, African leaders, it is my urgent call that we share and transport the same message across the whole world with President William Ruto that he may never be targeted or isolated for targeting, for assassination. Otherwise, short of that, I don't know, wherever you're watching from, let us know in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe because we are going to be producing more videos like this. Next month, we plan to travel to Kenya and talk to some of the intellectual politicians in Kenya and find out what they think. So tell us what you think in the comment section so that we can incorporate your comments in the next videos to come. Otherwise, for now, give us a like, share the video, and then give us that big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Africa Digital Library, long live Africa, long live the continent of abundance.